Chapter 991 Dragon Blood Ring Hansen saw a red jade ring drop to the floor. It had been on the man's finger, but it slipped off when the body withered. He was not interested in jewelry, but he gave it a scan to see if it was significant. Anyway, it wasn't, to his knowledge, so Hansen paid it no mind. But when Moment Queen saw the ring, she was shocked. She pretended not to be, though. Hansen had never heard of the ring before, but she had. The blood ring was something of much renown. When she was in the third god's sanctuary the first time, Dragon King was incredibly famous. He also had a vast collection of jewelry. His most important possession was this ring. He would never be seen without it, and Dragon King had an obsessive compulsion to never let it out of his sight. People said Dragon King synthesized the ring with the horn of a super creature, and he fed the ring with his own blood for many years. While many people had seen the ring, few knew what it did exactly. The only time he would remove the ring was to fight a human, and when he set it aside, not even his wives were allowed to touch it. He once murdered his favorite wife for touching his ring. When she touched it, she did so by accident, and as a consequence, he broke her spirit stone without remorse. Some said the ring possessed Dragon King's second soul, and all his memories were stored there, like a backup. If he ever failed his ascension to the fourth god's sanctuary, he could resurrect himself with this ring. Although it was just a legend, and something unproven, it was still a valuable artifact. It was the most important treasure of the late Dragon King. Moment Queen wanted the ring for herself, as a sort of memento. If she went to get it, though, Hansen would believe the ring to have a true worth and keep it for himself. H.M., how can I grab the ring? I need to distract him, somehow. Moment Queen tried to think of a way in which she could draw his attention away from the sight. As she contemplated what to do, Hansen was still observing the body. He circled it slowly, over and over. Despite how much he looked, there did not seem to be anything there of worth. He fancied taking the king's armor, but after touching it, it started to decompose. Hansen scanned the corpse repeatedly, unable to fathom how he might walk away from the venture without a reward. Moment Queen, just about managing to contain her excitement, said, That armor is pretty good. You should check it out. The armor is turning into goop. How is that pretty good? Hansen said. Moment Queen then said, The reason it decomposes is because of the scales. It decomposes with the body. Okay. And what's your point? It's ruined now. Hansen frowned. Moment Queen smiled and said, You don't understand. There is one portion of the scales that won't decompose. Which part would that be? Hansen asked with confusion. There is a dragon scale that grows upside down. Even when Dragon King dies, that scale won't decompose. It will absorb his life force, and thus be quite precious, Moment Queen explained. You're saying it's that good? H.M., where is it? Hansen said. I don't know. It must be underneath the armor or something. You should take a look, Moment Queen said. Okay, fine. I'll take a look. Hansen then got to it, in search of the mystical dragon scale Moment Queen had told him about. When Moment Queen saw Hansen begin to rummage about the body, she coldly smiled and thought to herself, Consider this a trade for the ring. If I didn't want this ring so badly, I wouldn't have told you about the scale, either. Moment Queen had not lied about the scale's existence, but it was an effective way of buying time for herself. And even though she knew, she wasn't willing to tell him where exactly the scale could be found. If she did, she'd have no time to fetch the ring without attracting his notice. Hansen, no longer focusing on her, was keen on pillaging the corpse. The prospect of treasure always demanded his attention. She walked around, as if pretending to be busy elsewhere, all the while eyeing the ring on the ground. The dragon blood ring was near the altar, and as if she was pretending to examine the altar itself, she inched her way closer to the ring. Waha, it's mine. If the legends are true, perhaps I can use the emperor's help to get rid of this asterisk shoal for good, Moment Queen thought. As Hansen plundered the body, she did her best to control her heartbeat and act as normal as possible. It's mine. Seeing the ring so close, Moment Queen was exuberantly joyous. She believed the ring would aid her in escaping Han Sin's control. Just as her finger touched the ring, a fat little hand reached out to grab it. Moment Queen froze. Ah, Bauer looked very curious, holding the ring. Chapter 992 The Reverse Dragon Scale Moment Queen's heart pounded in her chest as she watched Bawa hit the floor with the ring in gleeful child play. She wished to snatch it back. But if she showed any interest in the ring, 
she knew Hansen would take it away from her for good. Bauer continued to play with it, and Moment Queen hoped she'd soon lose her interest in it. As Bauer swung her arms around, with her fist clenching the ring, it looked as if it'd slip out from her grasp any second. Bauer, that belongs to the dead. You shouldn't do that. Hansen was afraid she'd end up eating the ring. Bauer was stronger than anyone he knew, but on a certain level, she was still a baby. He still felt compelled to be as protective as any reasonable parent should. When Moment Queen heard him speak, she hoped Hansen would tell her to discard the ring. She knew she still had to act cool and not show any interest, so she held back for a while and just watched Bauer. But then, Bauer stopped messing about and just sat there. She fiddled the ring between her fat, wrinkly baby fingers. It seemed as if she was actually considering whether she should keep it or throw it away. Suddenly, she raised her hand as if to prepare a throw. Moment Queen's glee and excitement immediately returned, and in her heart, she started shouting, Throw it. Yes, throw it. Bowa's hand raised the ring and stopped. She didn't throw it, and the baby's crooked face suggested she was still deep in thought over whether or not to keep the ring. Moment Queen's face turned dim again. Soon, Hansen would find the scale. And when he did, her opportunity of nabbing this ring for herself would go, too. But then, Bauer pulled back her raised arm, as if to finally throw the ring away. This delighted Moment Queen. But the roller coaster of emotions showed no sign of slowing down, as Bauer's arm dropped with the ring still in her possession. Moment Queen's mind was furious, screaming, Just do it. Finally, Bauer came to a decision. Her face looked serious, and she seemed ready to throw it in Moment Queen's direction. Yeah, that's it. Come on, baby. Come on. Moment Queen opened her arms, as if to gesture that she should really throw it her way, and prepare to catch it. Bauer's face dropped its baby-like glee, though. She was serious, like a baseball player, preparing to throw the game saver. Seeing Bauer ready to throw, Moment Queen's hands opened wide. The baby's arm launched forward, but no ring left the clutch. Bauer smiled to Moment Queen like a little demon. She stood up, with the ring firmly in her hands, and ran over to Hans Sr. Bauer climbed on top of Hansen's back and forced the ring on him. Hansen accepted the ring and smiled at Moment Queen. Moment Queen, after seeing their impish smiles, knew she had been tricked. Hansen must have known there to be something special with the ring a long time ago. To test her faithfulness, and whether or not the ring was a worthy item for the taking, he pranked her. Asterisk Shoal. Asterisk Shoal Father. Asterisk Shoal Daughter. Moment Queen's mind was an inferno of raging hatred, particularly so when she realized she had been tricked by a baby. Hansen took the ring. He didn't know what good it would do him, if any, but if Moment Queen wanted it that badly, then he knew he'd be better off with it. Hansen did not say anything, though. He ignored Moment Queen and continued searching. He lifted up the armor and saw a scale that looked like that of a fish. It almost looked like a shell. Brother Dragon, you're very dead, aren't you? That means you won't be needing this, right? Don't worry, Skeletor. I'll make good use of it. You have my word. And who knows? I might make you famous again, Hansen said to the withered husk as he plucked the scale from its bony torso. Perhaps it was because the body was dry, but he had no problems taking the scale. When his fingers felt the scale, it was cool to the touch. The scale was white and semi-transparent. Moment, is this the reverse scale you mentioned? Hansen asked. Yes, Moment Queen coldly answered. Is there anything else around this place worth taking? Hansen asked, with a tone of slight mocking. Moment Queen wanted to kill Han Senator if it wasn't for the ring. He wouldn't even have learned about the scale, either. No, Moment Queen coldly said. Dragon King died because of his attempt to level up. It was not his tomb or shelter so it was likely she was telling the truth and there really was nothing else worth taking. Finding the ring was lucky enough, and it was only through the Emperor's stubbornness it was there for Hansen to claim. Well, if there's nothing else for us here, we should take our leave. Hansen then returned the way he had come and placed the angry Moment Queen back in the Sea of Soul. With Bauer up front, leading the way, the return trip to the shelter did not take long. Resting in his hall, Hansen fiddled with the ring and scale he had retrieved. Moment Queen wanted this thing pretty badly. I wonder what it does, exactly? Hansen couldn't discern what made either item special. Well, treasure is treasure. And besides, I've been needing a ring to pull my bell. Hansen then placed the ring on his finger. When he wore it, though, the red of the ring seemed to come alive. 
It glowed menacingly, and the sound of a roaring dragon boomed through the hall. Chapter 993, Stealing the Source A light, manifesting in the shape of a dragon, shot out towards Hansen's forehead. The light was wickedly fast, and Hansen was not quick enough to avoid it. Dragon King has returned. A voice rang across the expanse of Hansen's mind. It was firm and menacing to hear, but there was a glimmer of genuine surprise and relief as an undercurrent to the tone. Hansen looked around and suddenly realized his environment had changed. He was inside his own consciousness. Ahead of him was a red lotus, and in its fold, something was trying to wiggle its way out. Evil Lotus Queen, you belong to her. And she has marked you? Dragon King's voice roared with sudden anger, and he went on to say, If she is here, I would do best to avoid her. But you are merely a marked subordinate. There is nothing you can do to prevent my rebirth. Dragon King, I think it would be best if you did not leave the Lotus. You should go back to your ring. Hansen was not afraid of Dragon King. The Dragon King that sought to invade his mind was not the emperor he once had been. Now, he was only a king spirit. If his body was there, then perhaps Hansen would have been unable to beat it. But with only his mind there, playing an away game, he was nothing compared to Hans Sr. After all, Hansen was a super king spirit that also possessed a super king body. Dragon King was only a king spirit and had no body at all. What a fool. Do you think me feeble? Without a body? I will make a good vessel out of you. The encased dragon raged against the lotus folds and did its best to escape entrapment. Cracks began to run the length of the petals, and it looked as if it would soon break. Suddenly, the lotus began to shine. And then, fresh petals began to grow to replace the near-broken ones and keep the dragon contained even tighter. I am a dragon. Break. The dragon roared, and then, the red lotus burst into flames. Seeing the red lotus get destroyed, Hansen was delightfully happy. He had never lifted the mark that had been stamped on him, in fear of triggering the lotus. Now that Dragon King had removed the lotus stamp on his behalf, he was actually grateful. Far away, in a palace, Lotus Queen frowned and said, Dragon King was not killed for good, and furthermore, he has touched my man. Even the Demon Emperor has returned. Oh, I'm going to make that Dragon King suffer. Dragon King, breaking free from the constraint of the lotus, exclaimed to Hansen, Now, I can use you as a vessel and when I returned to the world outside this pitiful mind. Before Dragon King was able to finish his dialogue, the shadow of a holy white light beamed in front of him. Against that, even his draconic powers were no longer intimidating. How, how can your mind be so strong? In front of that shadow, his dragon body was stripped of all its fierceness. It looked weak and frightened, by comparison. I told you to return. You brought this upon yourself. Hansen's Super King spirit mind prepared to attack the Blood Dragon. Dragon King roared and attempted to flee. The figure of a Super King spirit leapt forward and palmed Dragon King, making it wheeze blood. Of course, it wasn't physical blood. It was Dragon King's actual life force, and as it seeped out, Hansen was able to consume and absorb every last morsel of it. Super King spirit self gene plus one. When Hansen heard this, he was delighted. He squeezed the frail dragon repeatedly to gain more and more self-geno points. Dragon King was in utter shock. He was so powerful, but against the spirit that now pounded him, he was helpless. The blood dragon was like a dying lizard, unable to withstand the hits. Escape was impossible for it. I am a true dragon. Dragon King knew he'd be broken for good soon, and he'd never return. He had to do whatever he could to ensure his survival. But Hansen wouldn't let him. And in response to Dragon King's proclamation, he made the spirit's draconic body explode with a bright white light. Amidst all the brilliant light, the dragon tried to slip away. You can't just come and go whenever you please. Hansen reached out his hand and grabbed the dragon blood life force. Arg! Dragon King shouted as the tiny sliver of life force was taken by Hansen's hand. Dragon King was being dominated, and Hansen would not show mercy to someone who had sought to usurp his body. Absorbing every glint of light he could, Hansen's Super King Spirit Self Geno Points count continued to increase. Reaching down to the flailing dragon, Hansen squeezed it tight. Super King Spirit Self Gene Plus One. More of the dragon's life force was absorbed, and with it, Hansen's Geno Points increased again. After squeezing some more, the dragon was beaten. It only had the strength to let out a pitiful scream. Don't kill me. 
I can give you something wonderful in return for your mercy. Please, just let me live, and it is yours. Dragon King begged and pleaded for his life. Okay, then tell me what I can have. This better be good. And if I don't like what I hear, you're dead meat. Hansen coldly said. Dragon King quickly responded, telling him, I am one of Demon Emperor's generals. When he went to the fourth god's sanctuary, he left me his armor. I can give it to you. Please, just don't kill me. Chapter 994 Ancient Demon Emperor Tree Dragon King had been returned to the ring by Han Senator when Demon Emperor entered the fourth god's sanctuary. Not a single sanctuary had been discovered by humans yet. When he was about to enter the fourth god's sanctuary, his equipment became useless, so he gave all of it to his subordinates. Dragon King received his armor, and when he tried to ascend to the fourth god's sanctuary, it saved him from certain death. His ascension failed, but he was not killed outright as was expected. Therefore, Dragon King made preparations for a future sacrificial ritual that would allow him to one day be reborn in full. The Dragon Ring was his last resort, but neither method had worked out well for him. Furthermore, the armor was damaged. But regardless, Dragon King hid it someplace special, so he could recover it upon his return to the world. Hansen put the ring on and hid it with his Dong Shin Aura. He summoned Moment Queen so he could ask for more information regarding Demon Emperor. Moment Queen scoffed and wished to ignore Hansen completely, but she knew that wouldn't get her anywhere. So, to gain his favor, she told him what she could. When she first reached the third god sanctuary, Demon Emperor had already been in the fourth god sanctuary for 10,000 years. What she heard were only whispers, murmurs, and rumors regarding the figure. And she never even knew Dragon King was associated with him. What she had heard about most was the simple power Demon Emperor possessed. She had no idea about what he owned or anything. Hansen put Moment Queen away again. Then, he touched the ring and asked, Dragon King, do you know someone named Yiksha? He is another subordinate that belongs to Demon Emperor. We were never friendly, and he was always jealous of the armor I was given. Still, he never could beat me, Dragon King told Hansen without fuss. Did you know that he went to your sacrificial ritual? Hansen asked. That asterisk shoal must have come from my armor. Little did he know that it was not with me. I foresaw the possibility of something like this occurring, and so I set up a trap. If he sprang it, he should be heavily wounded now, Dragon King explained. Hansen did not move and asked, You said you were given the armor. What was Yiksha given? He was given a demon seed by Demon Emperor. It takes 100,000 years to grow. The tree that grows, upon maturity, can bear many fruit that provides spirit genes. If low-tier spirits consume one, they can outright open gene locks. But like I said, it takes 100,000 years for such a tree to grow, Dragon King said. It's no wonder Yiksha wanted to kill me if it took that long. Now Hansen was understanding Yiksha's motives a whole lot more. Dragon King also said that if a king spirit ate one, it could increase a few self-geno points. But whenever Hansen ate one, it only provided him a single point. It seemed as if things were far more difficult for a super king spirit. I need to find a way to move that tree. Maybe I really can get it to grow some more fruit, Hansen thought to himself. Hansen kept Dragon King in the ring. He planned to leave him there for a while, as he wasn't going to get the spirit's armor just yet. Even if the location he spoke of was true, the armor resided deep within the forest. And venturing there could prove too much, even for him. It was likely he'd encounter a variety of super creatures if he was to go there. Even if he used the underground shelter, there was no guarantee it would work. And Hansen was now responsible for the lives of everyone else who lived in the shelter, meaning he could not take so many risks. If a super creature attacked the shelter, it was likely they'd all be killed. Hansen looked at his self-geno points and noticed he had 163. 45 of those had come from Dragon King. Hansen recalled he had to battle Split Space King, so he decided to return to the spirit base. I hope he was patient enough to wait all this time, Hansen said to himself, as he drove the island to where he had proposed that the fight be held. All the spirits were still gathered at Shinshao, waiting for the much-anticipated fight to commence. Split Space King had waited there for three days, and when the Shadow Spirit never appeared, they believed it was due to cowardice. Unfortunately, Hansen's absence only fueled Split Space King's arrogance. I expected more from the spirit that beckoned me to fight. Split Space King feigned disappointment, but the mocking of his tone was hard to miss. 
You really want to have a self fight with me? A voice came from an incoming island, with a handsome spirit atop it. The king. Is the nameless king spirit actually the king? It would appear so. Nias. Split space king said the king is garbage. I guess now we'll see. When many spirits recognized Hansen, they began to talk amongst themselves with great fervor. You are the king spirit that wished to fight me? Split space king asked. Yep, Hansen answered. And you are the king? Split space king asked. Yep. Hansen nodded. Well, that saves me some trouble. Let me kill you so we can get this over with, Split Space King said. Hansen started the self fight. Due to Split Space King being first rank in the entire spirit base, he was able to send him an invitation immediately. Split Space King promptly agreed, which led to his statue going bright. Self fight? It really is a self fight. All the spirits began screaming with excitement as the hype consumed them. Only the greatest of enemies would commit to a self fight, so it was rare to witness such a battle. Chapter 995 Invisible versus an Equal A white light shone brightly as Han Sen stepped onto the physical clouds of Xinxiao. Then he said, I'm afraid this will be my final fight in the Third Spirit Base. No one will dare fight me, after what they are about to see. That being said, I'll grant you the opportunity to forfeit before we begin. The spirits that watched all believed Han Sen was trying to bluff his way out of the fight. At first, Split Space King did not say a word. He silently stepped onto the clouds of Xinxiao, then said coldly, You're afraid, huh? You should be. Hansen laughed in response and said, You can go on believing that, if it helps. But how about you just cut the crap and try to kill me, like you've been saying over and over. Split Space King swung his hand like a blade that seemed to tear through the fabric of reality. Crack spiderweb through the very space around Han Sr. He really does wield the space element. Although it doesn't actually shatter the dimension, it is quite impressive to see cracks form in the fabric of space itself. Hansen wanted the genes even more now. But seeing what was occurring around him, Hansen did not try to fall back. He wanted to see if his super king spirit could withstand the attack. If he could not go up against space, then that meant he was not indestructible. So, Hansen stretched his body as light coursed through his veins and muscles. The light of his exterior was amplified. As the cracks of the dimension drew nearer, it looked as if they would shred his body. But without fear, Hansen stretched his arms and prepared to punch his foe, seemingly without a care for the cracks that were fast approaching. Fool. Split Space King laughed. Although his power was low, the cracks were like flying weaponry that sought to slice and dice Hansen into bits. All the spirits, seeing Hansen just move forward, thought something was amiss. The moment Hansen went through the cracks, his body bled. Even Han Sin's fist was bleeding, and as he pushed on through, he did so in a red light, as his clothes were dyed with his blood. Even King Spirits could not move through the cracks without getting destroyed in a barrage of lacerations. Space powers are too strong. Is there anything out there that can withstand it? Split Space King really is indestructible. Even the King can't beat him. If anything could actually challenge him, I'd wager it is only a spirit that wields the element of time. Split Space King looked on cockily, saying, What a fool, trying to transcend and break through the fracturing of space. Han Sen's body was covered in gruesome gashes, and the red shredding of his being was like the marking of a spider web. Split Space King believed the king's body would collapse into a mound of chopped meat if he pushed through a second more. But Han Sen's fist was getting close. It was getting dangerously close. Split Space King's face changed. He wanted to formulate more space tears but it was too late for him to do anything. Han Sen's raging fist was going to land, and the best he could do was establish a flimsy block. Muscle collided with muscle as bone went up against bone. The spirits, seeing Han Sen's body approach with a glowing fist, watched with rapt intensity as it broke Split Space King's arms and drove itself directly into his smug face. Boom. The white light drew together to create an orb of incinerating power, one that destroyed Split Space King's head. The arrogant spirit was sent flying back, crashing into statue in a bloody heap of broken bones and blood. Space King Spirit Gene Plus One Shen Xiao was so quiet, you could hear a pin drop. No one could believe what their eyes had just witnessed. They could not believe Split Space King had lost to a single punch delivered by the king. The eyes of the audience stared unblinking in disbelief of the sight. In continued silence, their eyes flickered between haunts and standing still 
and the crumpled body of Split Space King and the bloodied statue. I'm going to kill you. Split Space King respawned and did not wait a moment before racing forward to attack Hansen again. Split Space King created a multitude of cracks across the arena. It was as if Hansen was standing in a world of glass, one that was slowly breaking and collapsing. If you could actually break space, only then might I fear you. A kitten could scratch me harder than all this could. Hansen threw his fist forward once more. Again, many of the dimensional breakings cut Hansen, but the damage done was only skin deep. No damage was done to his muscles or even his super body. Split Space King was incredibly angry, and that fury spread out into his surroundings, making the area around him look like a broken snow globe. But still, even those attacks would only draw blood. Not a single one of those cracks were enough to truly repel Han Sin and his thirsty fist. Boom. Han Sin's punch nestled itself deep into Split Space King's head once again, with no fear, hesitation, or pain softening the merciless strike. Split Space King was powerful, but his body was not built to withstand the likes of Han Sr. During his respawn phase, Hansen approached the statue. And when Split Space King respawned, there were no dramatics to precede the next killing. Upon each respawn, Hansen was there, waiting for his next kill. The statue was like a space geno point dispensing machine, and the only sound to be heard was that of a brief scream being cut short every time. Indeed, no spirit dared make a sound as they watched Split Space King be utterly annihilated each and every time. It was a frightening scene, watching an incredibly powerful king be utterly destroyed like an ant. Indestructible. Every spirit had this word rattling around in their heads. Chapter 996 Ancient Shura Text Hansen was incredibly overjoyed, watching his Space King Spirit Geno Point tally increase one by one. Split Space King, before it was all over, became numb. Eventually, he gave up completely. Whenever he respawned, he stood there silently, awaiting death. Again and again, he allowed this to happen. Oh my spirit! The king is terrifying. What element does he wield? Physical? Maybe. But if that is true, can plain, physical power even reach such heights? Unless someone has more gene locks open, the king is unbeatable. The king won't be a king much longer. He is sure to become an emperor. This is the sort of spirit that will bring great change to the third god sanctuary. The king is indestructible. The quiet chattering between the spirits soon turned into a frenzy of praise and fawning, and whenever they looked at the king, their faces fell slack in complete awe and admiration of him. Boom. After killing Split Space King 99 times, Hansen's space geno point tally reached 100. He couldn't increase it anymore. I've gone up against many king spirits in my time here and still, none are able to defeat me. Is this to continue forever? Hansen spoke aloud and put on an expression of disappointment. Then he turned to leave. Only the king can say something like this. And to be honest, he has every right to. The spirits all looked on him in amazement. Hansen did not really mean what he said. His primary goal was to provoke the ire and hatred of the other spirits even more, and perhaps draw out another challenger. Unfortunately, none were willing to. Unexpectedly, the spirits all agreed with his words and deemed them appropriate. These spirits are lame. Humans are fearless. They wouldn't act like this, Hansen thought to himself. I can't believe Split Space King was unable to defeat the king. Flower Empress was in shock. If nothing stops him, he's well on his way to becoming an emperor. He's got the makings of a spirit that'll reach the fourth god sanctuary. Without error, Heavenly Empress said. The emperors have had no luck so far but they won't relent in their pursuit of him. And when they do find the king, they'll kill him. Flower Empress spoke with a soft and worried tone. I don't think that is necessarily true. If they find out where he is, I'm not sure they'll be able to do much, Heavenly Empress commented. I wonder who his parents are. I'd sure like to meet them, Flower Empress said. You want to be their daughter-in-law? You're thinking that far ahead, are you? Heavenly Empress jested with a laugh. Flower Empress said, Well, there's no denying it'd be great if I could marry a spirit such as that. The baby we conceive would be something quite special, for sure. And regardless of that, I still owe him kisses. Moment Queen had been sent out to retrieve creatures, and when she entered the spirit base, she heard the news. Whoa, that sounds like a scary spirit. I wonder where he came from. Moment Queen did not think highly of herself, and she did not even reckon she could defeat Space King spirits of her own tier. 
After hearing the tale of the king, she thought to herself, if I can ally with him, I can most certainly exact my revenge. Hmm, but I've only opened one gene lock. I doubt I'll be able to catch up with him. When the image of Han Sin's smug face flickered across her mind, Moment Queen said to herself, Ugh, this is that asshole's fault. If it wasn't for him, I'd have opened a multitude of gene locks a long time ago. When the time for my revenge comes, I won't just kill him. No, that'd be too merciful. I'm going to enslave him. I'll make him my thrall. Moment Queen did not know the king was Han Sen, the person she hated most in all the world. As this was occurring, Han Sen was dining on a meal Zero had prepared. At the same time, he fiddled with the scale. With Moment Queen's fruitful hunt, Han Sen no longer had to worry about mutant Geno points. All he had to do was eat his fill. But the dragon scale troubled Han Sr. There were many small words inscribed upon it, and he had no clue what they meant. Dragon King told him it was a transcript of his own secret skills. But Hansen did not believe this, and he found it difficult to imagine someone randomly carving their skills out on such a unique scale. When Hansen pestered Dragon King for a more profound explanation, he translated the text for him. But due to Hansen not being able to understand the source text, he couldn't be sure whether or not to trust the translation. And still, Hansen believed he was lying. He asked Thorn Baron and Moment Queen what they thought and they both told him the same thing. The words on the scale were not written in any spirit language. Hansen then went to do some research, and he found a few languages that possessed similar runic systems to the ones on the scale. After a deeper analysis, Hansen was surprised to discover an exact match with the Shura language. Hansen had learned how to read, write, and speak the Shura language, but he had learned a modern variant of the language. The dialect written across the scale was ancient, and it was almost entirely different. Not wanting to jump the gun, Hansen spent some time with his research and was careful to confirm his findings. It wasn't long before he realized he really wasn't mistaken. The text on the scale belonged to an ancient Shura writing system. It was prehistoric. It was a shocking discovery, to say the least. The Shura could not enter the sanctuaries, so why in the universe would their runes be inscribed on the scale? Hansen attempted a translation with his computer, but there was little he could uncover. Although there were a few words here and there the system could translate, not a single sentence could be completed. At the very least, Hansen had now learned that whatever had been written upon the scale was not one of Dragon King's skills. And when he translated a word that was clearly the title of the text, it read, Azura. Chapter 997, Falsified Sky Sutra? Why is the dragon scale inscribed with Shura text? Hansen had tried his best to translate it, but it was mostly to no avail. So he turned his attention back to Dragon King and started interrogating him for information. But the spirit was tight-lipped, and no death threat Hansen could make was enough to force him to talk. It's like the sky, but it is not. It is Azura. As Zero returned, bringing back the Mi Feast of a hunt to the shelter, she started talking to herself when seeing the dragon scale. Did you say something? Hansen asked Zero to repeat what she had said. Zero pointed to the scale and said, it's like the sky, but it is not. It is Azura. You know what's written on this thing? Hansen's excitement perked. His excitement did not stem from Zero being able to understand the text, though. Zero was Ashura in some way or another. Although he was surprised to learn she was able to read the ancient Shura language, this was not what excited him. What excited him was what Zero had said. He recognized them, as they were the opening lines of the falsified Sky Sutra. Zero nodded. Can you read it out to me? Hansen asked in a rushed manner. Zero took the scale in her hands and started to read, as requested. It's like the sky, but it is not. It is Azura. Hansen was frozen, as 90% of the text was the falsified Sky Sutra. His heart pounded and his head pulsed as if it was going to explode. Hansen could not understand why the falsified Sky Sutra had been written in an ancient Shura language on a dragon scale in the third god's sanctuary. It gave him a headache, as he tried to comprehend all the possible implications this revelation conveyed. What's going on? Hansen asked himself, in complete disbelief. After Zero finished reading what was written, her hand gleamed with a power. All of a sudden, an invisible force was cast outwards against a nearby pillar with great intensity. Falsified sky powers? Hansen was quickly taken aback. Hansen had seen it many times at this point, so it was easy for him to recognize it. Zero, have you learned this before? 
Hansen asked, as he grabbed her by the arms. Zero shook her head, but Hansen still asked, and that's the truth? You haven't learned it? What about the falsified Sky Sutra? Zero shook her head, as if she had done something naughty. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cast it like that. I was just giving it a go. It's okay. You can practice it all you like. That's not what I meant. Hansen realized his reaction might have scared her. So, he gave her the scale and comforted her to the best of his abilities. Hansen had not practiced the falsified Sky Sutra to distance himself from the Luo family. Since Zero had suddenly just learned it, he didn't see the harm in allowing her to continue practicing it. But Hansen was still perplexed over the day's discoveries. He could not wrap his head around why the falsified Sky Sutra would have some kind of connection not only to Dragon King, but the Shura as well. Hansen's mother told him only members of the Luo family could learn the falsified Sky Sutra, but evidently, that was not the case. Zero had only just read it once, and she inadvertently cast it with as much ferocity as Luoine. Looking at Zero, Hansen now wore a complicated look that came from his intense interest in her character. Hansen left the hall shortly after this and went to a place where no one might intrude upon him in the shelter. There was a room there, and after closing its doors, he released Dragon King from the ring. The hall was suddenly alive with the sound of screaming. Even the King of Hell himself would have shuddered at the sounds of those anguish-born cries. No matter what Hansen did to Dragon King, he would not talk. No threats or wretched manner of torture or inflicted pain would make him speak. The Azura Sutra on the scale was the falsified Sky Sutra, and as incomprehensible as it seemed, Dragon King was not at all willing to elucidate the reasons why. How could Dragon King plead for his life before? And yet now, he seems happy to die on behalf of maintaining the falsified Sky Sutra's secrecy. Hansen wondered. Seeing Dragon King near death, Hansen returned him to the ring. Hansen really wanted to learn more, but for now, he had hit a dead end. With no further leads to explore, it'd have to be put on the back burner. Hansen thought about asking his mother, but she was never keen on discussing anything regarding the Luo family. As such, he thought it was unlikely he'd learn anything from her about this entire affair. And it would probably upset her if Hansen did start showing an interest in the Luo family. Hansen returned to the hall and continued dining on the mutant flesh moment Queen had retrieved earlier. And now, his mutant Geno points had maxed out. He gave his new strength a whirl on the tester and learned his fitness level was above 1500. This meant he was capable of opening his fifth gene lock. Unfortunately, his Qi Gong was trailing behind. He estimated it had take another three months just to unlock the fourth tier. The higher the gene lock, the harder it would be to unlock it. After the seventh tier, subsequent unlocks rested purely on talent and luck. Few super creatures and king spirits were capable of unlocking nine gene locks and the number of humans reaching such heights was lower by an extremely large margin. To kill super creatures in the future, though, Hansen knew he'd have to get his gene locks open. And so he was determined to do just that. If he didn't get them open, he wagered he'd have no luck in their hunting. When Hansen woke up, he received a package from an AI. Strangely, it did not say from whom it was sent. That's weird. Who sent me this package? Hansen opened the package immediately, not concerned about the remote possibility of something dangerous residing within. The Alliance was able to scan packages, anyway. If there was a harmful substance, such as toxins or radioactive material, or even bombs inside, the package would never have been forwarded to him. Chapter 998 Blind Man Stuff Hansen opened the package, which had been delivered to him in a recyclable box, and saw a lone envelope inside. Needless to say, he was taken aback. Sending someone a primitive letter in that day and age was very unusual. He picked up the envelope, which was plain and without text on the front, and turned it over. There was nothing written on the back, either. Hansen opened it up and pulled out the slip of paper that was inside. On it, two simple sentences were written. Something will arrive in three days. Take it to the shelter and do not allow anyone else to see it. Blind man. Hansen read it out and frowned. Hansen did not recall a person named Blind Man, but the writing was somewhat familiar. It was someone he had met once before, but his memory of the person's significance was hazy. When Hansen was in the Second God's Sanctuary, a man called Blind Man had given him a book called The Innocent. He only saw him once, and after their encounter, he disappeared and was never seen again. 
Why he would send a letter and ask him to expect a package in three days, Hansen could not tell. What a strange person. Whatever was going on, it didn't feel like a mere prank. Regardless of what was to occur, Hansen decided to wait three days and see if anything did indeed come. When that day rolled around, a package showed up at Hansen's door. Strangely, it was delivered to him by an actual person. This person was well-cloaked, though, and it was difficult to even discern their gender. The person placed the item in the mailbox and left. Because this item had not been scanned, Hansen brought it to the sanctuary and got Moment Queen to open it for him. If there was something dangerous inside, it was best if she handled it. When the box was opened, nothing bad happened. And on the inside was a miniature purple cauldron. It was around 20 centimeters tall and 10 centimeters wide. There was a lid on it, so if there was something within, it was obscured from view. Curiously, though, emblazoned on the cauldron was the symbol of the Nine Life Cat. Is Blind Man a member of Blood Legion? What meaning could there be to him sending me this cauldron? Hansen frowned and gave the cauldron a good shake to determine whether or not there was something inside it. No sound was emitted, which told him it was empty. This actually disappointed him. Removing the lid, though, proved his little test wrong, and what was inside gave him quite the shock. Sitting inside the cauldron was a red jewel shaped like a ping-pong ball. It was rather weird in that it had made no sound when he shook the cauldron. How was that possible? Hansen was really confident in his abilities of perception and being able to sense the presence of something, even if it was out of sight. If there was something inside, he should have been able to detect it. Hansen closed the lid and gave the cauldron another shake with the jewel still inside. Like before, no sound was heard. It was as if the cauldron was empty. When Hansen removed the lid, the jewel was still there. He now also noticed a pleasant, herbal fragrance being emitted. What is this? Hansen took the jewel out. It felt warm to his touch, and it was lighter than any stone he had felt before. Hansen wondered if the jewel was actually a jewel, or was instead some sort of pill. If it was, it didn't look edible. Swallowing it would be like swallowing a rock, or so he thought. He didn't fancy digesting something like that. Not partial to the consumption of such an item, he placed the jewel back in the cauldron and found a place in the shelter to hide it. He didn't really want to help blind man, but he was worried about the possibility of the package being associated with some murder or criminal act. Hansen returned to the Alliance and searched for information regarding such a cauldron. He found many different cauldrons on Skynet, but there was nothing remotely similar to the one he had just been given. There was no news out there, either about the theft of a cauldron. After entering the dimensions of the cauldron, he should have been able to find something out about it. But alas, he could not. Hansen could not find anything out about the jewel, either. Frustrated, he simply decided to log off Skynet and leave. Following this package, though, Hansen did not receive anything else from the elusive blind man. With no more reason for it to demand his attention, Hansen decided to let the matter go for the time being. Little Han, we have received a report of an injured sacred blood creature. Would you like us to check it out? As Hansen went off to the east of the shelter, Old Huang sought him out. What is it? His fourth gene lock had almost been opened, so he was fancying the idea of a quick kill of a sacred blood creature. It is a black snake of sorts. It appeared to be dying, but that didn't stop it from swallowing a mutant class frog. Still, that's what told us it was most likely a sacred blood creature, Old Huang elaborated. Let's take a look, then. Hansen followed Old Huang out of the shelter, and they ventured west. After ten miles of travel, they encountered a black snake resting on a rock. Its body was as thick as a barrel, and it had to be at least fifty meters long. Concerningly, its scales had been shredded by what appeared to be massive claws. It is a sacred blood creature, you're right. Hansen scanned it, and took notice of the life force. And as they suspected, it was indeed legitimately damaged. Chapter 999, Blue Ape Little Han, is it a sacred blood creature? Old Huang asked. Hansen nodded, saying, yes, it is. Hansen brought out his bow and summoned a saber-tooth bee arrow. Then, he took aim at the giant snake's weak spot. Old Huang, ready yourself for a fight. Hansen then commanded the party to establish a formation. Hansen loosed the arrow. It pierced through the snake's already shredded flesh and embedded itself entirely within the beast. The black snake shrieked in agony and took off after Han's senator. It expelled a black smoke from its mouth as it went, and it looked terrifying. 
The snake can breathe a horrid mixture of fire and toxic smoke. Run. Hansen summoned his dragon blood snake as he ordered them all to fall back. The two monsters lashed against each other. Although the giant snake had been severely wounded, it was still more formidable than its new opponent. Without wasting a second, it slithered its way around the dragon blood snake to ensnare and choke it. So powerfully did it seize Hans Sin's creature, it looked as if its entire body would snap in two seconds flat. The dragon blood snake squealed in pain as the black snake rotated its head, nearing the mouth of its captured foe. Then it opened its venomous maw wide and cast a gust of toxic smoke down the dragon blood snake's throat. The dragon blood snake's muscles relinquished their strength, and it collapsed as if it were drunk. It wished to escape, but it longer had the strength to even attempt to free itself. Hansen returned the dragon blood snake to the Sea of Soul before anything even more foul befell it. Whoosh! Another saber tooth bee arrow was fired, and it drilled through another of the giant snake's wounds. The black snake was whipped into a frenzy by Hansen's bold attacks, and it lashed towards him with a mouth that breathed fire like a geyser. The forest around him was turned to cinders, and charred branches cascaded to the ground in a chimney red, Halloween orange haze. If a portion of the once green region had been spared the fury of the snake's fire wreathed vengeance, it soon fell prey to the fierce, disintegrating properties of the beast's toxic smoke. Hansen pranced quickly in retreat, weaving his way past trees and bushes, using what he could as momentary cover. His sacred blood armor was able to repel the fire and toxic smoke, thankfully. All he had to do to remain alive was not breathe in the smoke himself. Using the bushes, Hansen evaded the snake's enraged attacks. And after each successful dodge, he fired an arrow at another of the snake's wounds. If Hansen had not gotten as strong as he was, he wouldn't have been able to keep his head above water and remain toe-to-toe -to -toe with the foe. Still, the sacred blood creature was scary. And despite the barrage of arrows Hansen fired, and the shrieks of pain they drew from the snake, they didn't actually slow the creature down. It still came for Hansen as madly as ever. He could only be thankful the snake had already been injured so severely. Had it not, Hansen wasn't sure if he could have handled it. The black snake was strong, and it continued as it was for quite some time. But eventually, as all things did, the blood loss took its toll. The creature began to shiver and shake, and its attacks lost the precision and finesse they once had. Hansen, braving the inferno, took the opportunity to run loops around the snake. He fired arrow after arrow, each striking the wounds of the giant snake. After an hour of this, the black snake lost its composure and fell to the ground. It remained there, with at least 200 arrows protruding from its scaly skin. Sacred blood creature Black Python killed. No beast soul gained. Consume its flesh to gain 0 to 10 sacred geno points randomly. Hansen felt great relief following that battle. It had almost been too hot for him to handle, and he was supremely thankful the creature had been found wounded. He did not fancy going up against such a foe if it was at full health. Hansen then went to fetch old Wong and his people and brought them back. As they prepared to transport the creature back, something leapt out of the forest towards the snake's body. It grabbed the snake, threw it over its shoulder, and ran away. Everyone was frozen stiff. An ape had just waylaid them one that was two meters tall and had baby blue fur. For it to carry such a creature all by itself was no small feat, and yet despite that, it managed to race through the knotted woods with impressive speed. SH asterisk T. How dare you take my kill? That belongs to me. Han Sen's wrath was quickly incited, and he fired arrows as he yelled at the fleeing simian. But the ape did not look back, and off it continued to go. It had positioned the snake across its back, too so that the corpse would be the recipient of any arrows fired at the ape's back. ooh -ha, ha The blue ape turned around and laughed at Han Senator then. It went back to running away. F asterisk CK you, monkey. Hansen was furious. He had to do something, but first, he told Old Wong to return. The blue ape continued running through the tangled overgrowth of the forest, and Hansen planned to go after it. Unfortunately, it too was a sacred blood creature. And so, to ensure the safety of old Wong and the others, he made sure they did not follow. What's more, he had seen the ape's claws. It was quite possible that the blue ape was the one responsible for the snake's initial injuries. As Hansen gave chase, the blue ape sped up. It ran faster than Hansen could. That surprised him, too. It was as if the blue ape had suddenly activated a speed boost. Is it just fast? Or has time just sped up? 
Hansen was quite surprised. The blue ape shone with a blue light as it went, and further and further it raced. When there was a wide enough berth, it would even turn around to taunt Hansen with a cheeky grin. Hansen was unable to catch up, and after a while of chasing it, the thief had gained a lead that increased until it was completely out of sight. Regretfully, Hansen had to give up the pursuit. There was no use in Hansen getting mad, as it was his fault for not being able to match the ape's speed. He returned to the shelter empty-handed, but did not make a fuss. What had occurred with the ape did not wait on his mind, either. He soon forgot about it entirely. Failure was to be accepted sometimes, and it was something that happened frequently, when someone wished to hunt creatures. But a few days later, there were growing reports of a blue-colored fiend making a habit of stealing kills and even wounding people. Hansen frowned. With the ape's power being what it was, he knew the ape could have killed the hunters if it chose to. So, it seemed as if the ape had returned with the desire to provoke them. Stay in the shelter over the course of the next few days. I will check it out, Hansen commanded his people. Then, he went to the spirit hall and picked up Bauer. With the baby in hand, he left the shelter. Hansen had been unable to chase the blue ape before, but things might be different with Bauer in tow. If the ape made an appearance and did something to upset Bauer, Hansen was fairly sure she'd use the gourd to make quick work of it. Chapter 1000 Battling the Ape King Hansen left the shelter with Bauer. He killed a few primitive class bugs at first, to see if that would draw the ape out. Not long after, it had indeed come to steal his kills. It crept near to Hansen and watched him. It was possible the ape knew Hansen was special, more accomplished than the other's fighters it had burishly stolen from. This time, it did not make an immediate appearance and try to tackle Hansen before running off with the goodies. It just waited and watched. Hansen was aware of the ape's presence, but pretended he wasn't. If he revealed he knew it was close by, there was a chance the ape would scarper. And if so, he'd most certainly be unable to pursue the ape if it was empty-handed. Hansen faced away from the ape, and holding Bauer, he looked for more prey he could kill. When he started to move, so did the ape. Hansen found a black scorpion lying ahead, and noted it was primitive class. He fired an arrow. The scorpion's carapace was broken by the sudden shot, and the insect quickly died. And just as this happened, a blue flash leapt out of the bushes. The ape spared no time in picking up the scorpion, shouting mockingly at Hansen, and running off back into the tangled depths of the forest. The ape could have easily killed the scorpion if it wanted to, and it was clear it was interested in annoying Hansen more than anything. Hansen immediately opened the three tiers of his Dong Shan Sutra. As he did, he covered the ape and sealed its seventh sense. Where are you going to run now, you little imp? Hansen pulled out his bow and fired. Having been unexpectedly robbed of its seventh sense, the blue ape was quite shocked. It frantically panicked as if it had been blinded, and a saber tooth bee arrow had already made a home on the hairy fiend. The sharp arrow hit the monkey's soft belly, and it accelerated as it came into contact, spinning as if it were a drill. Surprisingly, the arrow was only able to ruffle some of the ape's fur, and was unable to break the ape's skin. The blue ape squealed in fright, but it didn't let Hans Sin's meddling stop it from trying to escape. Although its seventh sense was still sealed, it was still able to reorient itself and try to flee. Perhaps, Hansen thought, the monkey was familiar with the area, and thus it could still run off in a certain direction with great speed. Hansen gave chase, determined to fire another arrow that would strike the monkey's arse. Through the boons of Da Shin Aura, Hansen was able to fire the arrow silently. And because of this talent, the arrow managed to avoid the attention of the ape. As planned, the arrow dug into the monkey's meaty backside. Roar! The blue ape's arse was bleeding. It pulled its arms back to finger the wound, which used blood. It looked rather funny. Ha ha. Bauer clapped and laughed at the sight. Hansen was going to fire another, but the ape's blue light appeared. And after this occurred, the speed of the ape greatly increased. He tried giving chase to the monkey, but Bauer looked unmoved, and it didn't appear that she wanted to bring out her gourd and kill the ape before it could escape. Needless to say, this disheartened Hansen, somewhat. Bringing out his bow again, he fired. Unfortunately, not even the arrows could keep up with the fleeing ape. Eventually, it disappeared from his sight. It went fast. Although Hansen had lost sight of the creature again, all was not lost. This time, he had drawn blood. With a good whiff of the ape's scent, Hansen would be able to track it and discover where the ape had gone to. 
The blue ape traveled through the forest for a good long while, and Hansen was determined to follow it. As long as the ape's trail didn't lead him to the more nefarious corners of the forest, that was. Because Hansen was able to mask his scent and movement, even if there were creatures near him, he would most likely be able to avoid them and not alert them to his presence. After 50 miles of travel, however, the scent became lighter. Hansen presumed the wound on the blue ape's arse had probably healed up. But the blue ape seemed to have a taste for vengeance. Hansen had inflicted a decent bit of damage, and in an embarrassing spot, too. Given the chance, Hansen believed it would only be a matter of time before the ape returned for him. Dad? Monkey? Bauer suddenly pointed to a space ahead. Hansen peered in the direction she was pointing and suddenly saw an army of monkeys jumping around. The monkeys had already spread out to surround them, something which had shockingly escaped Hansen's realization. Ooh ha The thieving blue ape made an appearance. And as it revealed itself, so did all the other monkeys that surrounded them. They all chanted in their simian banner, wildly and sharply. Hansen observed them all and counted there to be around 1,000 of the creatures. Save for the sole sacred blood blue ape, which had clearly established itself as king, the rest were all a mixture of primitive and mutant class types. In unison, all the apes let out a cry and ran towards Han Senator as cool as ever, though he did not flinch back from their approach. And as this occurred, Bauer clapped her hands as if she was applauding grand theatrics. Hansen opened his Dong Shen aura and sealed the seventh sense of every creature there. And like they had just become headless chickens, all the monkeys lost their sense of direction and became aimless. Hansen brought out his bow and fired an arrow at the blue monkey king, aiming for the felon's ear. The arrow drilled neatly into the spot he had selected, but it did not remain there long. Immediately after it had settled, the ape grabbed the arrow, pulled it out, and broke it. Hansen was disheartened by the loss of the arrow, so he pulled out Taya and ran towards the king. The ape king could no longer hear or see, but it looked as if it was able to do just fine with guesses. It turned around and sought to run off again. The blue ape's behavior was starting to aggravate Hans Senator the beast was too cowardly, despite its dastardly acts. Hansen wanted to fight it face to face, but his inability to do so annoyed him. Hansen was even angrier at the thought he could never actually catch up with the fiend if it chose to flee. Still, this area was home to many such monkeys. Wherever the blue ape lived, it had to be near. I don't think so, Hansen said, with Bauer on his back sucking a dum-dum in excitement. 